Hi, my name is Oliver, and in this video I'll teach you how to animate a faux or fake 3D mock in After Effects. This video is sponsored by AE Juice, and later on I will be using their package called Liquid Elements, so stay tuned. First of all, I have illustrated a simple mock in Illustrator, imported it into After Effects, and then I have split it up so it's easier to animate. Let's quickly walk through how I've split it up. So first of all we have the handle, it's quite simple, it's just a path with a stroke. It's the same color as the base color of the mug, so it blends in with the mug. Then we have the top of the mug. If I move this to the side, you can see that this is essentially the rim and the cup itself. And the reason why I've split it up into the top and then the bottom of the mug is so I have the coffee in the middle. And that way when I move the coffee around, you can see that it sort of stays in place just as long as you don't move it out of the border. As an example, if I had to animate someone drinking the coffee, this would be quite simple as I could just take the coffee and drag it down. Now to get started animating this muck and the fake 3D, we actually have to parent some of the layers. Because we will essentially be controlling the muck from the muck top, you could also just use a control layer, but that just creates one more unnecessary layer. And therefore, we'll actually take everything and parent it to the top of the mug. So that is the handle, the coffee, and the bottom. Just pick whip onto the top. And now we actually have to move the anchor point because we'll be animating the mug from the bottom point. Therefore, we go to the pan behind tool, click and drag on the anchor point, hold down command and control, and it snaps to the bottom. The first animation we're actually going to do is the faux rotation of this handle and it's easier to do now before animating the mug so we can actually see how it spins all the way around before we do anything else. Now if we select the handle we actually want to take the anchor point and drag it to roughly the center of the mug. So that's right around here and now we're actually going to enable the 3D for this layer because this is fake 3D but we actually need some of the 3D aspects in After Effects to make this work. Now the reason why it's fake 3D is that if you take the handle, click R as in rotation, and you actually go ahead and rotate the, let's see, that's the Y rotation. You can see that this rotates around the mug, but there's one problem. It's really flat. As you can see, when we come to this angle at roughly 90 degrees, it, it will sort of disappear because it's completely flat. Now there's a way of fixing this. So the way we're going to do this is that we select the handle, then we take the stroke and put it down to one pixel. So right now it's barely visible, but we'll get back to that later. Then we select the handle, go to layer, then we select the layer styles and we'll go ahead and add a stroke to the layer. Now underneath the stroke, we will just select the color of the mug and we will increase the size as you can see. And also we'll take the position and change it from outside to center. And therefore we will have to increase the size just a bit more. And to be able to show you what this really does, we're actually just going to change the color to a red so it's easy to see. Right now you can see it has some rounded corners. That doesn't really matter. If we take the handle and start rotating it, you can see that the stroke stays the same, so when we get to a certain angle, it still has the same thickness, and therefore it seems 3D. Now a problem with the stroke is that if we actually were to enable 3D for all of the other layers, and we took this handle and rotated it around, you can see that it actually doesn't go behind the cup. It would go behind the cup if we didn't have the stroke, but there's an easy workaround for this, so it doesn't really matter as we get the desired 3D effect. So let's actually animate the rotation. We will start at zero degrees, add a keyframe to the Y rotation, and let's make this last roughly one second. We will have to animate this 360 degrees around, so we can actually just type in one at the times. That basically just means 360 degrees. So if we play this back, you can see that it spins all the way around. Right now it looks pretty weird though, because this cup is illustrated at an angle, 
which means that at the middle of the animation here at the start, it would actually need to be lowered a bit because the handle would go from up here and then rotate a bit down and then up again because of the angle. But before we do this, we can actually just create some easing for this animation so it's easier to match the other rotation. So we create that by selecting the keyframes and pressing F9, going into the graph editor, and I just have to disable the expression editor so we have a bit more space down here. This is simply the value graph, so I'll just select the Y rotation. If you don't see the graph like this, go in to the settings and select the value graph. And basically, I'm just going to speed it a bit up at the center, not too much. So it slows in and out of the animation like this. And now I'm going to animate the set rotation. So you can see that it's downwards. This will start at zero degrees. Then we'll go to the point where it's at the center of the cup roughly at the start. We can just drag this down so it seems fitting. So that might be right around here. Go to the point where it's on the side again and just change it back to the zero degrees from the start. So we might need to do some tweaking to get this perfect. Let's first go ahead and just ease this and do a little bit of tweaking in the graph. So I actually just want to do some simple tweaking. So I'll just line up the paths as you can see here. So it's evenly distributed, roughly the same on the other side, just to get a bit more easing. So if we play this back, you can now see the animation. It looks a bit weird because it doesn't go behind the cup as of now, but we'll fix that later. So just worry about the first part of the animation. So as you can see, it rotates down, rotates up again, and that's basically what we want. So maybe we need a bit more easing at the start because as you can see, it rotates down a bit too quickly. So maybe you drag this in a bit like this. And now you can see that it matches a bit better with the actual dimensions of the cup. So we can go back into the standard view. And now we are actually going to animate the handle behind the mug. So it doesn't just stay in front of it all the time. And to do this, we actually also need to look at the color because when we are at the center point of the mug, we want the color to be a bit darker so it stands out. Because if we actually open up the handle as of now, go into the layer styles and the stroke, and we just use the eyedropper tool for that standard color, you can see that the handle disappears and we don't want that to happen. We want it to stand out a bit. At the start of the animation, you can see it because it's at the side, but it's the same color, so it disappears and then appears again on the other side. So what we want is the same color at the start, at the center, a bit darker, and then at the edge again, we wanted the same color so it's easier for us to make a transition uh, between the handle being in front and behind the mug. So let's animate the color. Go to the center of the animation, so we can actually just press U, so we can see the other keyframe. So this is the center at the start. Here we can just make it a bit darker, a bit more saturated. Let's make it a bit more interesting. As you can see, it's now visible. We might need to tweak this a bit, but as for now, it's fine. Copy the first color, just paste it. So we have it here on the side. And right now we just need to do roughly the same easing. So F9, and as you can see, it's, it's not really possible to do the value graph tweaking when it's a color we're working with. Well, you could do it, but it's a bit more complicated. So let's just choose the speed graph. And it's, it's roughly the same technique. You just have to think a bit more visually about how this would actually look. So roughly around here should work. And as you can see, it changes the color. Maybe this is a bit too extreme as for now, so we can just make it a bit lighter but this should actually work just fine. And as you can see, we have that faux 3D rotation. And now we just need to make it go to the background so it actually doesn't stay in front all of the time. The easiest way to do this, the most simple way, is actually just going to the point right before it should switch. So that might be around here. We could choose it to be here just so it doesn't interfere with the overall highlight too. Then we can just choose the layer, press Command-Shift-D or Control-Shift-D if you're on Windows, to split up the layer, 
Then we drag this underneath the mug. So you can see it appears in the background now and it actually disappears when we are in the back. And then right here, when it doesn't interfere with the rim of the cup, we can just split it again by pressing Command Shift D and dragging it on top again. So because it's the same color over here, you really don't notice the transition. And that's why we're working with the same color. And that's also why we're only changing the color here at the start. So it's a bit more visible and then change it back because you then won't really notice the transition here. So if you play this back, you can see that we have this flawless rotation. You can animate this at any speed you'd like. The reason why I've animated it a bit quickly is because we want the cup to sort of be thrown in from the left side to the right side. And therefore we want sort of a, a quick rotation, I'd say. Now we're going to animate the position of the mug. So this, as I said, was from the mug top. That's our control layer, you could say. You can create a null layer for this. But for the convenience sake, I'll, I'll just use this layer. Press P as in position. I usually go ahead and right click the position and um, separate the dimensions before animating it because I'm actually only going to be working with the X position and that way I can use the value graph. So we want it to last, let's say roughly maybe one second. This is about feel, so I'm, I'm just going with my gut feeling right now to sort of see how, how this will work out. So we can drag out the keyframe to one second, go to the very start and we'll basically just drag this off the canvas like this. Now we're going to ease this and it should be quite fast at the start, I'd say because it's sort of being thrown in, uh, tossed over the table. And we'll just select the value graph. So we can drag this up. So it actually starts uh, increasing in value quite quickly at the start. It doesn't have to ease in. And then it has to do a bit of easing out at the end. So we'll try and preview this. And as you can see, this works okay. Maybe it's a bit too slow. So we can just go ahead and drag this keyframe in a bit, try and preview it. And this is all about tweaking. So maybe it moves a bit too quickly at the start, a little too much easing at the end. It's really all about tweaking. So let's see how this looks. This could actually work quite nicely. But, but again, it's, it takes some time. Uh, if, I, if I was actually animating this project on my own, I would most likely use around five minutes just to get sort of the speed and intensity just right. So this is something you have to play around with, of course. Maybe also we can do a bit of offsetting with the handle. So we, we have to make sure that we grab all of the handle layers, the two handles at the top, that is, and then we have the handle at the bottom. And maybe this should happen a bit quicker. So this could actually work fine. I, I quite like the speed and given the circumstances that I, I don't have the five minutes to sort of sit and tweak this, this is, this is good for now. So we're going to animate the rotation of the mug. That's also why we have put the anchor point or placed it at the bottom. And we sort of want the rotation to start right before the mug stops. So you have to imagine there's quite a lot of force on this mug when it gets thrown in. And as the friction starts to stop the bottom, it will also react by sort of tipping a bit over, so it almost falls and then tipping back and forth. You can try to do this with a glass of mug in real life and sort of get a sense of the feeling of, of weight and how it will, it will react. So we go a bit before, it's at the end of the animation. Then we press R as in rotation. And we have to work with the set rotation. So place a keyframe, we just press U so we can actually see what we're doing. Then when it gets to the end, we want it to be tipped a bit, not too much because you have to imagine that it would fall over if, if it's tipped too much. So maybe three degrees should be fine. We can go ahead a bit. And now you have to imagine that we have to inverse the rotation, but also it doesn't have to be as much because over time that force will sort of decrease. It won't be the same rotation all of the time. Then we'll just sort of sit there like a pendulum forever. So maybe we can go for something like minus 1.8. And for the next one, the timing will decrease. 
as the timing and value will both decrease so it doesn't stay and do the same motion this time we'll go quite a a bit lower in the sense that we'll go for maybe 0 0.2 and then for the last one which is the shortest amount of time the shortest interval we'll just go for zero and if we select all of these and press f9 to ease them we can go into the value graph and you can see that we have this sort of pendulum movement but it's decreasing and you have to imagine that it should decay uh, exponentially so that means that it will decay a whole lot at the start and then decay less and less so we might have to do a bit of tweaking so you can imagine this sort of decay and the easing is quite simple again we'll just try and and match these handles up so it's it's quite quickly and we'll try and try and take a look to see if this feels right or if we need to do some adjusting that's all always what animation is really about it's about getting that sense of feeling for animation and how things should move according to physics and such so if we play this back you can see this actually has quite a nice movement maybe it's a bit a bit too fast we need a, a bit more time between it so it doesn't get that bouncy and we can just go out essentially and drag these keyframes out a bit so we get more of a sense of a coffee mug and I actually quite like this it's it's quite subtle it's not too extreme and I get a sense or a feeling that it's a it's a coffee mug that we're working with so the interesting part now is actually animating the liquid because you have to imagine that the liquid would move in the opposite direction of the cup so if you actually take a, a cup and fill it up with water or what, whatever liquid you like and you start rotating that cup you can see that the liquid actually stays in sort of the same angle it, it tries to stay flat and therefore this liquid will also try that and we'll have to reverse the rotation of it so if this cup rotates to the right the liquid will rotate a bit to the left so it actually counteracts that sort of rotation from the mug so we can copy these rotation keyframes and when we go to the coffee liquid we have to make sure that the anchor point is straight center so again make it snap by holding down command and control just paste in the rotation you can press u to see it and now we have to reverse it so go to that first keyframe and just put a minus in front then go to the second keyframe this already has a minus in front so delete it and we are just going to reverse this all the way so you can actually see that if we select both of these rotations and go into the graph editor they're going the opposite direction that way you can also see that the liquid is getting this sort of movement which looks really nice and we actually might have to offset this by a frame or two to give it the sense that the liquid is trying to catch up with the cup so two frames works nicely you can see that when the cup starts to rotate the liquid sort of follows behind in the opposite direction and just adds a sense of weight and and really adds a lot to the animation in general so now that we have animated this faux 3d rotation of the mug we have animated a bit of liquid we actually also want to animate a bit of splash for the liquid but often enough this is quite hard to do as these sort of liquid splashes you can't really do this simply either you have to do it frame by frame you have to get really lucky with an effect so it just works and it's all really time consuming so this is where I have partnered up with AEJuice who are the sponsors of this video they have sent over their pack manager including the liquid elements which I will be using to pep up this animation and add some secondary animation to really make it pop and stand out and as I said before it can be quite hard to do these frame by frame animations and they're quite time consuming and therefore they have created this pack called liquid elements which has a load of different frame by frame animations done by professional animators all over the world you can see that we have a load of different categories here as an example there are some liquid smokes there are some cigarette smokes so what we're mostly going to use are these splashes so we can search for splash over in that panel 
and we can go into the water splashes. So there are a load of different water splashes. And what I sort of want for this animation is that some of the liquid splashes from the left to the right, as you have to think about the momentum, the liquid is sort of being thrown to the right side. So a bit of splash, and then I want to add another splash just as this liquid hits the right side. So it sort of creates this chain reaction. Now the great thing about this pack from AE Juice is that you can actually just find the liquid that you'd like and you can drag it directly from the pack manager all the way over to the composition and use it easily that way. So I've done some research beforehand and tried out some different liquids to see what worked. And I actually quite like the one called 33 and the one called 31. So you can just find these by sort of scrolling down. And I quite like this number 31, as you can see, it goes from the left to the right. It's not too extreme because we're working with coffee. We're not working with sort of a big amount of liquid. So you just click and drag into the composition and it loads quite quickly. And as you can see, it's white by default, but we can change that up quite easily. We can drag it over to the position that we want and just scale it down. So it's just about adjusting it for now. And we want to parent this to the mock top. So it actually follows the mock. Now you can see that the position changes a bit, but that doesn't matter. We can just drag it back in here. And now we have to see, okay, where does this liquid hit? So maybe we want it a bit smaller and we can sort of line it up. And if we go into the effects controls, you can see that we have this fill effect. So we can essentially just eye drop the coffee and we get that exact same color. Now we want this liquid to stand out a bit so we can darken it and make it a bit more saturated so that so it's actually easier to see. Press OK. And now when we play this back, you can see that we have this liquid. And instead of using hours and hours on animating this frame by frame, you can just drag and drop and it's right there. So it's really simple. And if we go into this composition, and open up here, you can actually see that an artist has animated this frame by frame, which is excellent as it has a very high quality standard. So go back into the main composition and if we press U, you can actually see a time remap. This means that if we find this a bit too slow, we can actually just take this last keyframe and drag it in a bit. So this changes the speed and I actually quite like the speed here. Maybe I want it a bit more to the left and a bit smaller so it doesn't clash with the edge of this muck. And as you can see, we have this liquid. So now I want the second liquid because it's all about stacking these elements until you get something that you like. So we can go ahead and search for the number 33, which is this sort of small splash. And this we can use right as this effect hits on the right side. So it's sort of this chain reaction that I talked about. So again, very easily drag it into the composition You can just align it. And this is way too big for now. So we can actually just scale this down to our liking, maybe roughly around here. And again, we can parent it to the top of the muck. So we just have to readjust the position now. And we also can go in and change the color to the exact same as the other one. And now we of course have to time it. So when this liquid hits over here, we can drag this over so this starts animating. So let's preview this. Maybe a bit faster. So you can see that we have a bit of a problem that it hits the edge here. Or actually, this could work if we line it up a bit better. So it sort of hits the the rim and sits on there. That could actually be quite a nice effect. So just scale it down so you can see that it just hits the hits the rim. And if we zoom all the way out again, maybe we also want to make this a bit quicker. So again, press U, drag in the time remap. And as you can see, we have this very cool liquid effect, which was created in minutes rather than hours. And a cool thing is that they have so many different elements that you can actually also, let's say we need some sort of steam or smoke for the coffee. We can just search for smoke and let's see 
what is the best suited one for our animation. So I actually quite like this one. So I just drag it in. And now I need to do a bit of adjusting because the smoke will actually start a quite a bit larger than, than this bottom part. This is quite thin because it's probably meant for cigarettes, yeah. And we can go ahead and the way we do this is that first of all, we can just scale this up. We can actually parent this to the top of the mug. So just drag this into view again. And now we have to line it up. So maybe it can start right around here. And now you can see we need to do some masking so it actually fits with the cup. So go up and select the ellipse tool. And we can just drag out an ellipse like this. So it sort of fits the muck. And we can just the position of this sort of around here. Maybe we need to do a, a bit of feathering for this. So it actually matches up with the liquid and it's not such a harsh transition. So if we enable a bit of feathering, you can see that maybe we need to drag out some of the points so we don't feather the wrong edges. And we also need to change the opacity down. So it's a little bit visible, but not too much. So maybe 6%. And as you can see, it's right at the end of the composition. So we have to drag this all the way in. And as you can see, now we have some sort of smoke or steam for the animation. Right now, I think it's a bit too extreme and we also need to adjust the positioning. And maybe we can scale this up a bit more so it sort of fits better with the mug. Right around here. And also, let's just feather it a tiny tad more and play this back. So as you can see, we have created some secondary animation, some very interesting animation that would have taken a long time to create otherwise. And this is all because of the liquid elements from AE Juice. Now, if you're interested in this product, I'll leave a link for their website down below. Right now, they have a very special deal where you can get every single package that they have created, which is very amazing for only $200. Otherwise, you'll be able to get a very great deal on the Liquid Elements Pack. It's 1000 animated elements for only $69, so it's definitely worth a try. And I really enjoyed using their product. It's quite easy to drag and drop, change the timing and the length of the animation, and also change the color so it actually matches up with what you're animating. Now, if we go back into After Effects, it's actually also possible to sort of change the style. So if we go into these settings, you can see that there's loads of different styles. You can get glow, you can get shadows. And for this animation, I actually just wanted something simple, but this is just to show how versatile this package is. But that's really all for this tutorial. I really hope that you enjoyed these tips, that you learned something new about Faux or Fake 3D and I also hope that you'll check out the A Juice Pack which is really useful. If you enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like, comment down below if this helped you at all and also make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications if you want to get notified when I upload future videos. That's all for now, till next time.